everyone. My name is Felicia, and in 2011, I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Bulgaria. And along with my friend and fellow volunteer, Erin, we created the first Bulgarian National English Spelling Bee. The bee has come a long way over the last 10 years, and we all hope that 2020 would be a big celebration of all those who have participated over the years. Well, sometimes things don't always go as you planned, but I wanted you all to have an opportunity to make your own keepsake to remember your time with the bee. My specialty is baked goods, so I recruited a very special art teacher from my hometown of Fayetteville, Tennessee. Miss Jenny is going to lead you through drawing and painting your very own stylized bee. She'll be right up next. Hope you have your brushes ready. everyone, my name is Mrs. Jenny and I'm an art teacher from Fayetteville, Tennessee. I'm friends with Mrs. Felicia and I was so excited when she approached me to help with this special art assignment for the Spelling Bee contestants. Unfortunately, Corona has messed up quite a few plans for everyone. So those of us that are in charge of different organizations or groups are having to think a little more creatively on how to do some fun assignments. So I was thrilled to be asked to help her do this. She is a uh, wonderful asset to our community and she has bragged and bragged on all of you. So I know that you're pretty special because she says so and she is a woman of her word. All right, we are going to draw and paint a cute little spelling bee today and the materials that you will need. Now, if you've got paper to do this on, that's fine. It just needs to be thick. I'm using a piece of canvas and this just comes from uh, a Walmart or, or a Michaels store. Even I think Dollar General, places like that will carry these. And of course you can order them online. So it's just a flat panel canvas and you want to have a rag and at least two paint brushes. I like to use a flat paint brush and a pointy one. I also like to use a marker when I work, but you may want to use a pencil in case you make a mistake. And I also have a plate of acrylic paint. So we have two different colors of yellow. One's a little darker, one's a little lighter. And we have some black and white paint. And again, this is acrylic paint, which means it's water-based. That means it dries quickly and it's easy to manipulate, but if it gets on your clothes, it won't come out. So just be aware of that. Okay, as artists, what we want to do on paper is fill it. So I want to encourage you to work very large. So try and work close to the borders of your canvas. So our little spelling bee, what we're gonna do first is draw an oval. Now notice when I sketch my oval, I will pick my pencil up and you see lots of little, or my drawing utensil rather, you see lots of little broken lines. That's because I'm working my way around the shape. And then when I go back, I will outline the uh, part of my shape that I'm happiest with. So we're gonna draw what looks like an oval to start out there. And now what we're going to do is draw what looks like a little triangle at the bottom. So again, you can see how I've worked to fill my paper and I encourage you, uh, don't fret if it doesn't look just like my drawing because art should not look just like everybody else's. When you go to an art gallery or you go to a poetry reading or anything to take in the arts. You don't wanna see the same thing or hear the same thing over and over again. That's quite boring. So while we want it to look like a cute little bee, I don't want it to look just like mine. So if yours looks different, that's awesome. All right, now what we're going to do is draw two big circles. One's gonna be slightly larger than the other. I'm gonna start my circle up here. So I've got one big circle and then I've got one that's slightly smaller than the other. And inside of those, we're going to draw two pupils. So one big black dot in each eye, and you can shade those in. Don't worry about any of these little lines because we're going to be painting over those 
when we get into the painting part of this demonstration. All right, now we're gonna draw what kind of looks like a stretched out U for the nose. And the great thing about this little guy is he's supposed to be cute and funny, so that gives you um, free reign there as far as how you do this, it, how different it looks than mine. All right, now we're gonna draw two stripes. So I have one stripe. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little zigzag so that when I paint, I know which section I'm coloring in black. And I'm going to draw a second area. And I'll shade that in as well. Now this little fella or lady needs some wings. So I am going to draw what kind of looks like an oval. And I'm gonna draw one and two. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. If your wings happen to go off the paper or canvas rather like this, that's okay. Visually, that's actually a little more interesting if you allow part of your drawing to extend beyond the border. Okay, y'all are doing a great job, I'm sure. Now we're gonna put a little metal as if this little spelling bee guy has one. So I'm going to draw a square and I'm gonna kind of shade the square in. And then I'm gonna draw a triangle at the base of the square so that makes that shape. And now I will draw a circle and a little circle inside of it. Now to make this little bee look like he or she is floating, you want to add some action lines. So I'm just gonna add some broken little lines here in the background. And you could add some little lines like this to make it look like the eyebrows. So it looks like that little bee's getting along. All right. Now we are going to start painting. So let's start with our dark yellow first. If you purchase this in store, it will probably be referred to as yellow okra. And I'm going to start to paint. Now the great thing about if you go back in and outline this with a marker before you paint, look at this. I don't have to fret and be afraid that I'm going to go over my pencil mark. So after you get finished drawing, if you choose to draw with a pencil, which is probably pretty smart, then you can outline it with a Sharpie. And the great thing about this video is you can stop it at any time and come back to it. So when I'm painting, I have a pretty loaded brush. I don't have a crazy amount of paint, but I have enough to cover what I want there. So while that's wet, I'm gonna kind of smooth the paint out because I don't really want to see any lines. And I'm going to clean my brush off. So you should have a cup of water and a rag. So you can dip your brush in the water and then wipe it off on your rag. So now you have a clean brush again. And I'm going to grab a little of that bright yellow. And I'm going to, in a couple places, just brush that in. So that makes it look a little more dimensional, so not as flat, which is what our goal is. As an artist, we want things to look three-dimensional and not flat, whether you're painting, drawing, if you're doing photography, same thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing there. I'm gonna clean my brush off. You could just wipe it off on, on your little rag if you wanted to. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. And I'm gonna give a little highlight there on the nose. And maybe some highlights on the body. And when I paint, I prefer to avoid, when you get your little containers of paint, sometimes they will be described as like a matte finish or a gloss finish. So this one says matte acrylic paint. I prefer not to use any of the gloss paints because they just don't cover as well. That's more of a finishing layer. So when you purchase the paint or whatever you're using, 
if you feel like it's not covering very well, you may want to check and see because I bet you have purchased a gloss paint. But you can see we're layering these colors and I'm not trying to get rid of one over the other. I can see each one of those colors that I've used, which is great. So we don't wanna mix it completely in so that we lose anything. And now I'm going to go ahead and let's work on the outside a little bit. So I'm gonna take white and I'm going to fill that little wing in. And I'm going to fill all the wings in. I'm going all the way to the black line. If some, if a little's left, that is absolutely okay. Do the same thing over here. And let's go ahead and fill those eyeballs in. So at this point, you can see where I am getting rid of that initial line that we had. Working my way out to that border. And we can put a black outline in at the end. So I would definitely go ahead and try and work it up to the black edge though. and we'll clean any little boo-boos up that we have at the end. So it looks like up here, I think I missed a teeny bit of his head. So I'm gonna kind of turn my brush at an angle and use the tip there to get that in. So, so far we're, we're using that wide brush. We'll use the other when we get ready to do a little bit of detail. All right, as far as the metal here, we're gonna take bl um, black and yellow and mix a little together to make a darker color. So I want it dark, but I don't want it black. So like a muddy gold color. And we're gonna go ahead and paint that in. And in the center, I'm going to take yellow and white and make a lighter color for the center. Now for the little metal here, I'm gonna switch to, or excuse me, the top part of the middle. I'm gonna switch to my pointy brush now because we're gonna start and do a little bit of detail on everything. And I'm gonna use that same kind of muddy color to kind of outline this shape that we've got. And in the picture that y'all had, they used white green and red. So I'm not sure if they would be opposed to you using different colors since it's art. I think you could do it however you wanted to. But on the inside, you're just going to add some stripes of color. Now again, the one that um, I was provided as a reference, they used um, certain colors. Now I'm an artist so and I and I love bright colors and I'm sure that this represents something specific probably in relation to the country or the flag so I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody so we're gonna match the colors that are here but I'm just saying as an artist I'd probably have it pink with lime green polka dots because that's just me so if you're like that, I think it'd be okay for you to paint that. But for the demonstration, we're gonna kind of match what was provided to us, okay? All right, I'm gonna take a little white and kind of add a few highlights. So all I'm doing is taking white and I'm doing kind of like little broken lines. So I never like to outline anything completely. And now I'm gonna take a little white and we're gonna make a very light gray color. And we're going to take that color and we're going to do a little swoop on the eyes. And we're gonna take that same color and do some little swoops on the wings. Again, that kind of makes those wings look a little more three-dimensional. Maybe it looks like they're moving a little bit. And we will switch back to the black now and we're going to paint our stripes and our tail in. And at any point that you need to stop the video to dry your picture, 
or rewatch something, that is absolutely fine. I will tell you this, depending on how old you are, I know that we're gonna have various ages watching the video. You may want to outline this with a Sharpie or a paint pen at the end as opposed to a pointy paintbrush because the older you are, the more control you have over your paintbrush and the thickness or thinness of your lines and the younger you are, your tactile abilities may not be as advanced. So you don't want to have like an amazing picture and then it be gooped up just because you went in at the end to outline with this and maybe your brush was too loaded or you pressed too hard. So you may want to dry this and go back in and outline with a paint pen when we get ready for that part, or you can do it with a paintbrush. And I'm gonna demonstrate what both of those look like for you. Now I'm gonna clean my brush off and go back in with that pointy brush, grab me some white, and I'm going to do some little swoops. I like that wet on wet technique and I'm gonna add a little down here at the bottom. And we also need to do these little eyeballs up here, right, pupils. I don't want my brush to be too loaded. You can see how I pulled some of that off. And I'm going to outline those. And again, I'm gonna wipe that off. And I'm gonna put, I like the idea of little highlights. I'm gonna do two little swoopy swoops. Now again, in the backgrounds, you, I personally like color. So you can leave yours white, but if you want to do other colors in the background, I say go for it. I'm a color girl, so I'm just gonna grab some of these and I'm just gonna make it look like a party back here. So just put some confetti. Do you have to do this? No. But those of you that like a little color in your life, you may want to. And again, you can do whatever colors you want. Do a better job cleaning your brush off than what I just did though, because my yellow's got a little green because I didn't wipe it off. And again, I have tons of colors, but I'm just trying to use a limited palette today because I'm not sure what all you have available to you. And some of you may not have paint, but you have crayons, I'm sure, or color pencils. So you can outline this in black and then color it and mix your colors the same way that we did. So when you're happy with it and you think you're finished, you can dry it really well and then you're gonna outline. So again, you can use paint but if you mess it up, it is gonna be a little hard to fix. So that's why I always tell people, if you're just learning to paint, you may wanna use a paint pen or a Sharpie. But I've got my paintbrush here, it's the pointed one, and you can kind of roll it to give you a pointed edge. And you're going to go in and just kind of outline and lift around everything. So I'm not trying to outline in a perfect line. Um, that's difficult to do. So when I outline, I go in and you'll see I'm outlining and then I'm lifting my paintbrush. So that gives definition, which is what you want to give it that finished look. But you really don't have to sit here and outline every single little part. As long as you're outlining a pretty good amount of it and you're lifting your paintbrush as you go, that will work just fine. And I'm gonna do the same thing around the wings trying to be lighthearted with it. You don't want to overthink it. We're doing a cute little spelling bee fella, so he does not have to be perfect. And I would do these action lines. So if you don't have, um, well, not necessarily skills, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that with the paintbrush, you can use a paint pen or a thick Sharpie. I even use Expo markers sometimes because I really like working with those. So you can go in and you can outline like so. But you do wanna make sure that your picture is dry because if this drags through paint, it's going to ruin it. So make sure that your picture is dry. And when you're finished, you also want to sign your name. 
in the right hand corner so that everybody knows that you are the artist. So I hope y'all enjoyed doing this cute little spelling bee. Congratulations on your hard work and I hope that you have a blessed and a wonderful day. And maybe I'll get to do something else cool for you again. Y'all have a great one and I hope to see you again soon on YouTube. Bye.